Hi everyone, Stepan here. Uh, with today's video I'm going to be finishing the series on the Scotch game. And uh, for the last one I've saved the Schmidt variation, uh, also known as the Mises variation when it gets to the critical point, which is probably the most uh, popular uh, variation of, of the Scotch at the highest level and what players with the black pieces choose against the Scotch most often. It is also the opening that uh, Anatoly Karpov chose against Gary Kasparov when he got surprised in their 1990 uh, match in Lyon. In fact, it was played in game 14 uh, when they drew, which is the first time uh, Kasparov uh, played the Scotch in the World Championship. And it was also played in game 16, uh, where Gary Kasparov managed to win. We are going to look at that game at the end of the video. So the Schmidt variation is uh, something that remained as the main weapon against the Scotch uh, on the highest level. And there's probably good reason for that. Uh, the variation is very versatile. Uh, it gives uh, black tremendous fighting chances, I would say much more than the classical variation which we saw in the previous video. And if you want to go for a win with black against the scotch, then this should be the variation you choose. On the other hand, white has a lot of chances too. White could go for several different setups and uh, one thing that's certain is, the game, is that the games are not going to be boring, which is great. Okay, uh, let's get into the opening. So e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, d4, the scotch game, e d4, knight d4, and now black goes for knight to f6. Previously we've been looking at the move bishop to c5, which is the classical, we've also been looking at the move queen to h4. Okay, uh, now uh, the variation branches out with two of white's main moves, uh, knight c3 and knight takes c6. Uh, by far the more popular move is knight takes c6, which leads to all the mainline complications. It's the battleground uh, in which Kasparov and Karpov fought in the 1990s. Okay, and knight to c3 is considered to be a sideline, so we are going to look at that first. Uh, there are four moves that black could play here. Uh, bishop c5 transposes to the classical variation, so we are not going to be looking at that. Uh, you can check that out in the previous video. Uh, the main move is bishop to b4, pinning the knight. And two interesting moves are d6, uh, which is sort of passive, and black uh, accepts the fact that white has an initiative in the center and more space. So bishop b5, pinning the knight. Bishop d7, castles, bishop e7. You can see that black's development is, so, is sort of on the first two ranks. d5 hasn't been played and it probably will not be played. So this is probably the most passive way to fight knight c3, so I wouldn't recommend it. Instead, after knight to c3, I would either recommend bishop b4, which is the main move, or an interesting sideline with knight takes e4, which might seem tactical and which is, th which is tactical. And if white isn't prepared, then he will either waste a lot of time or go wrong at some point. So after knight takes e4, the correct way to play is to simply take the knight. Knight takes e4, and now the point of the piece sacrifice is queen to e7, and the, the recapture of the piece is inevitable. f3 saving the knight, but d5 now. Bishop b5 is the best that white can do, uh, trying to win a pawn here, and uh, the rook if black isn't careful, but simply bishop d7 before capturing the knight. And now bishop c6, bc6, castles, d takes e4, rook to e1. Uh, this is the best that white can do, and uh, I would say that uh, the position is completely equal. You can see that for the moment, White has six pawns, black has seven pawns, but it's going to be hard to defend uh, to defend this central pawn. F5 isn't really uh, a good move in this position. And, uh, well, if black is too greedy trying to save his pawns, then he could be in trouble. The engines give this position as better for black, but I think that, yeah, they can't really decide. But if you let it run long enough, it's going to say that it's slightly, slightly better for black. So nothing major in the position and definitely uh, a good... Uh, variation for black to try and get white out of, out of his preparation. So most players with white pieces are going to expect bishop b4, and bishop b4 is going to be played in most of the games. Uh, just uh, to give you a point of reference, bishop b4 has been played 4,000 times, and knight takes e4 has been played 40 times. So it's definitely a move which could surprise your opponent. So remember the line uh, with after knight c3, you play knight takes e4. If you want to go for the best variation, then bishop b4 is the line. Now white should continue with knight takes c6. 
uh, doubling uh, black spawns and black recaptures with the beep on the point of b takes c6 is that black wants to push d5 through in the position because if he doesn't uh, he's going to have less space in the center and less squares for his pieces so d5 is a plan and in order to push through with d5 you need to recapture with the beep on if you recapture with the deep on, firstly, uh, white uh, has the option of exchanging the queens and uh, denying you castling rights, which is never pleasant. So that's another thing. And the second thing is the, the d5 break. White now continues with bishop d3. And black can now choose between castles and d5. They mostly transpose. So after castles, castles, black will play d5 anyway. Uh, so it's pretty much the same thing. You can play d5 immediately. And whenever black plays d5 as white, you need to remember that the best thing to do is to undouble black's pawns and leave him with this structure of c6 and d5. Uh, so after e takes d5, c takes d5, castles, castles, bishop g5, black is going to play c6. And this is the most thematic structure you are going to get in the knight c3 variation of the Schmidt, uh, of the Schmidt scotch. And... Uh, I think that white has an advantage simply because black has a few weak squares and uh, these hanging pawns on uh, on the c and the d file which aren't really easily defended if you can imagine the dark squared bishops being traded off and uh, let's say for example you trade these two pieces uh, which could be a strategic plan in this position you play c3 and put your knight on d3 let's say you play knight e2 knight d4 if you manage to achieve that position, then you're probably going to be better. The second plan might be, uh, let's say you trade of these pieces, you play c3, b4, knight a4, knight c5, and your knight is going to be a monster on c5. So there are a lot of strategic possi possibilities for white in this position, while on the other hand, I'm not really sure which plans to suggest for white. And uh, I would always, pre uh, for black, I'm sorry, I would always prefer to have white in this position simply because I find it easier to play. Uh, just for an example, uh, two main moves here are either queen to f3 or knight to a4. Knight to a4 prepares to advance some pieces and it does go uh, along with this plan of knight c5 in some possibilities. h6, bishop h4, bishop h rook to e8, c4 uh, is another way to go, bishop d6, c takes d5, c takes d5, rook to c1, isolating black spawns and... If you know any plans in the isolated queen pawn positions, uh, whichever side has the, has the isolated pawn really wants to attack as much as possible and doesn't want to trade off the pieces. And in this position I can't really find a basis for a strong attack for black. After c6 and the main move queen to f3, uh, black should retreat his bishop to d6, uh, rook f to e1. Rook to b8, rook a to b1, h6, bishop f6, queen f6, queen f6, g f6. And you can see that once again white has a, more, uh, uh, a better pawn structure and definitely a pleasant position. This is uh, still theory, there are still around 50 games from this position, so uh, still very well known position. And black, is, black accepts uh, this position, going into this position, which I don't really understand. Because now all you all you have is two minor pieces. Okay, black does have the bishop pair, but how do you exploit that? White's pawn structure is perfect, while on the other hand, black has probably the worst pawn structure you can imagine. Hanging pawns here, isolated pawns on the A and the H file, and doubled pawns on the F file. So, a horrible pawn structure. So my conclusion would be that after uh, the Schmidt variation and knight to c3, white is able to get a pleasant position in most of the variations. And even though it might not be as aggressive as knight takes c6, knight c3 is definitely worth a try and uh, definitely something that uh, is less theory heavy than, than knight takes c6 and something that might uh, give you an opening advantage. Okay, uh, still, uh, it's not a winning variation. Most advantages you are going to get are going to be structural and you are only going to be able to exploit them in the end game. So if you play knight to c3, then you can expect winning in the end game if you play the middle game. Well, if you go for knight takes c6, then you're basically saying that you want to win before the end game starts. So you could do that uh, comparison. Okay, uh, now uh, let's look at the other move, uh, the main move, the most popular move, knight takes c6. After knight takes c6, there is a long forcing variation, which you simply have to remember if you ever want to play the scotch or play e5 to face e4. This is uh, probably uh, 
like chess culture, which you, which you have to know similarly to how you have to know the, the few first moves on, of the knight or for whatever other main opening. So if the knight takes c6, once again, you don't take with the d-pawn because the queens will get traded off and you want to have the d5 break. So you take with the b-pawn. And now the game continues in a very forcing manner. e5, uh, queen to e7, pinning the pawn to the king, queen to e2, unpinning and defending the pawn, knight to d5, c4 chasing the knight farther away and this is the start of the variation here the variation branches out you might find some similarities between the elekine defense and this variation which is true because the knight goes from f6 to, to d5 and sometimes to b6 so th it's similar in that way but uh, i would say that uh, in this variation of the scotch white's e5 pawn as opposed to in the Alekine defense isn't that overextended and such a big problem and weakness so i would say that this is a favorable variation of the Alekine for white now the variation branches out to two main moves one is bishop a6 and the other is knight to b6 uh bishop a6 has been played uh, 1800 times and the knight to b6 had been has been played 1500 times uh, in the game that we are going to look between uh, Anatoly Karpov and Garry Kasparov, uh, Karpov in this position went for knight to b6. So this was his weapon of choice. We're going to look at both moves. Okay, after bishop a6, white has several, several different options. Uh, the main option is b3. Uh, the other option which white can go for, which is an uncommon sideline, is g3. And after g6, b3, uh, you are still going to reinforce this c4 pawn and develop and fianchetto your bishop. So this might be a nice uh, move order trick for, for white to confuse the player with black pieces. But definitely the two main moves are b3 and uh, the second one, knight to d2. So let's look at that first. Uh, firstly, the, the point of both moves is to reinforce this pawn, uh, develop your pieces, and later on play b3 uh, and uh, bishop to b2 in this position. And with b3, you simply play that immediately, reinforcing this. Of course, note that the knight cannot be taken until the queen has moved. So in most variations, the queen is going to go to e4, trying to unpin. After knight to d2, black has two moves. One of them is castle's queenside, which might surprise you, but it's actually a fairly sensible move. And after b3, f6, black is going to try to create central pressure, break up, break up the position, remove the e5 pawn, and try to create some chances while the king is still on e1. And if the king castles king sides, then white doesn't really have a big attack. It's going to be really hard to break through b5. So this position is common, but castles is a sideline. A much more common move is g6, uh, trying to castle kingside, which is more sensible. After g6, uh, the variation will continue knight to f3, queen b4 check, uh, king to d1 is the most common move. You don't really want to develop your bishop giving up your pawn, and you don't really want to defend with the queen uh, giving up your pawn here. If you defend with the knight, then you're sort of uh, underdeveloping your pieces, which isn't smart. And if you look at it, your king isn't really hor horrible on d1, it's quite safe. Knight b6, uh, now defending uh, the knight, even though it wasn't still attacked yet, but now uh, he's putting uh, some more pressure on c4. b3 defending, bishop g7 putting pressure on the long diagonal, and you can see... It, the very nature of the position is extremely volatile, and uh, one small mistake could mean, uh, well, uh, the difference between the loss and, and the win. And of course... Uh, both sides have chances, which is what makes the Schmidt variation fun. Queen d2 now, trying to exchange the queen, queens off. Uh, and the best option for black is to take. Takes, takes. c5, uh, locking down the position, uh, restraining white from entering the d4 square. King c2 would be the best move. Castles, g3, g6, b3. I'm sorry, uh, castles. Okay, castles. And yeah, in this position... Uh, you could argue who is better. Uh, I would always prefer, prefer to have white because of the pawn structure. Uh, White's next moves are bishop d3, rook d1, rook e1. Normal, normal moves, normal development. Once you get your rook to e1, you probably want to play your d3 bishop to e4, trying to exchange the b7 bishop. And I think that even though it's nothing major, uh, white should always be slightly better. Perhaps bishop c3. And then moving the knight and playing the move f4 and returning the knight back, you want to lock out this bishop as much as possible. And for black, once again, you, you don't really want to trade the pieces off. You want to create chances uh, while uh, there are pieces still on the board, which is hard in this position. Uh, the main move after bishop a6 is the move b3, simply developing c4, uh, simply defending c4. 
Black should continue with G6. Uh, another move is Castle's Queenside, uh, which I wouldn't really recommend, but this is the, the main branching of the of the position. After B3, you can go for Castle and Kingside or Queenside. If you Castle Queenside, uh, then the position is going to be much more aggressive. So G3 and Black goes for the immediate G5, trying to trying to create attacking chances. Bishop B2, Bishop G7, Knight D2, Knight B4. Uh, now looking at the C2 square. Knight F3 defending C2. Rook h2, e8, bishop h3, h5. You can see that black is virtually going all in, but there's one trick in the position which white is counting on, and that's the fact that the that the b4 knight is trapped. So whenever white plays a3, the knight is going to be loose uh, here, and it's going to have to go to d5. For the moment, it cannot be captured, but as soon as the queen moves, then it's going to be unpre. So in this position, a3 is played, and this is still theory there are still about 10 games from this position knight d5 and now queen d2 finally unpinning and preparing to capture the the knight so g4 doesn't really win a piece it trades a piece you can see that it's really hard for black to retreat anywhere if he retreats the knight to b6 it's simply going to be a bad piece and white will have time to retreat one of his pieces so g4 is played Queen a5, firstly threatening the, the bishop along with the knight, but after king b7, cd5, gf3, castles. You get this crazy position in which you can't really say who is better. I would say that it's equal and that you can't really say who is going to win. Okay, so if you want to play a crazy game after b3, castle, queenside. If you want a semi-normal position, then go for g6. Uh, the idea behind g6 is simply uh, bishop g7 and uh, trying to castle in most cases. Or castling queenside once again, if you if you feel like that, which is actually the most common variation which occurs because white doesn't really release the pressure and allow uh, black to play what he wants to play. So the most aggressive way to play here is the move f4. If you want a normal game with the white pieces, then g3, bishop g2 is the way to go. Um, f4 is best for a reason you simply take up more space lock down the bishop from ever coming to g7 and being useful and uh, f4 has been played 400 times g3 has been played 150 times and uh, i have to recommend f4 because it's the most aggressive way to play so f4 d6 undermining the center queen f2 knight f6 bishop e2 uh, note that the pawn was pinned and now d takes e5 and castles if you take then you're you could be in trouble uh Okay, so this line is uh, more aggressive, but still okay for white. You have temporarily given up a pawn, which is most probably going to be recaptured in the future. The second line which you could go for is after g3, bishop g7, bishop g2, castles, castles. This is probably what I would prefer to play. Uh, for the moment, yeah, you're losing, you're losing a pawn, so you're going to have to defend it with bishop b2. Uh, I forgot to insert that move. But basically, the, the position is... Uh, with all four bishops being monsters, and that's what makes it fun. Once again, a very fun position. So if you go back, uh, after knight f6, knight x e6, b x e6, e5, queen e7, queen e2, knight d5, c4, the move bishop a6 uh, defends the knight indirectly. Okay, so you can either defend the knight indirectly or retreat the knight. Bishop, c, uh, bishop a6 is what I think uh, should be played because it's more aggressive and more complicated. And if white wants to play the scotch, which is avoiding the, no the normal Roy Lopez's or the Italian games, then you should make it as tricky as possible for him. Uh, once again, uh, two main moves, b3 and knight to d2. Uh, you should know both, but be prepared for, for b3 the most. And remember that you can either castle queenside or play g6. Uh, after castle's queenside, you're going to have a very aggressive position. And after g6, you can still choose whether you want uh, a normal game or, or to wreak havoc on white's position. Okay, uh, now let's go over the second most popular move. Uh, knight takes a6, b takes a6, e5, queen e7, queen e2. This, you should just repeat this a hundred times to make sure you memorize it. Knight takes a6, b takes a6, 6, e5, queen e7, queen e2, knight d5, chase the knight further away. Remember the Alekhine patterns, knight from f6 to d5 to b6. So knight b6. Okay, uh... Knight b6 can be met by three different moves. Uh, there's the move knight c3, which is considered to be the main move, uh, the move knight d2, and the move b3. Uh, in the game Kasparov-Karpov, uh, which is the first game Karpov lost against the Scotch, uh, Kasparov chose the move knight to d2. 
Okay, Knight to d2 is still considered to be uh, a sideline compared to Knight to c3, but it's it's a viable move. So b3, Knight d2, or Knight c3. Uh, in my opinion, b3 is the safest move. Uh, you get to trade off uh, some queen side pieces, as, as we are going to see, and you solidify your structure, still leaving black with this weakness. So a5, bishop b2, you have to defend to in order to be able to meet a4 and a takes b3 with a takes b3, a4. Knight d2, normal development, uh, defending b3, a takes b3, a takes b3, rook a1, bishop a1, queen a3, queen d1. And I just like this position for white. Uh, as many uh, pieces get traded off, the easier the position is going to become for white. Okay, black has some bishop b4 stuff and, and, and stuff like that, but it's nothing really major. The bishop is going to d3, the king is going to e2, you don't really have to castle because uh, black doesn't have nearly enough attacking pressure. And let's say bishop b4, bishop d3, queen a5, king e2, d6, knight f3, bishop g4. Uh, a very pleasant position for white, which I would uh, really like to play. Okay, uh, still, if you want to keep it uh, more on the safe side for white, then you might want to avoid this, because uh, if you are not careful, and let's say Black Castles put his, puts his rook on a8, uh, well, you could be in trouble. But if you play carefully, if you know the position, if you understand the threats, then you should be fine. Uh, the second move uh, I want to look at is knight to d2, Kasparov's choice. Now there are two moves, a5 and queen to e6. Uh, a5 is considered to be the main move, uh, but most of the time black is going to play a5 anyway, so let's just stick to the main move. Uh, they tend to transpose. g3 is white's response, trying to fianchetto the bishop and castle. Queen to e6, uh, now putting pressure on c4. b3 defending c4, a4 undermining, bishop b2, bishop b4 pinning the knight. And now bishop g2, castles, castles. And this is the starting position uh, after knight to d2 of the, of the main line. It could go various different ways. And the most thematic uh, thing about this position is the queen side pawn exchanges and the fact that black can cho choose several different approaches to this structure and trying to undermine it. Sometimes black is going to completely ignore castling and uh, attacking play and simply go after your pawns after this exchange trying to install a piece uh, to b4 and try to play d5, we can destructure. If you are left with the isolated c4 pawn or b3 pawn, then your structure could be could be bad. Okay, uh, so knight d2. And we are going to look at this move in more detail in the game uh, that we are uh, going to see at the end of the video. Now let's look at knight c3. Knight c3 is the, I would say, most sensible move, uh, the most solid developing move. Once again, queen e6 is played, and in this position... Uh, there's a thematic move uh, that, uh, well, yeah, uh, there is a move which you need to remember. Usually, b3 is the way to play these position, positions, but after knight c3, you need to get rid of your queen from e2 to make sure you can develop your bishop, to make sure you can castle. So the move is queen e4 here, which might, might seem strange, but the point is to get the bishop to d3 and to castle. g6, bishop d3, bishop g7, and before castling, of course, you need to defend your e5 pawn, so, so f4. Castles, castles. This is one of the most theoretical positions in the in the Schmidt scotch, and this is something that's going to occur very often. Now, I think that this constellation of queen and the bishop, this battery isn't really that good because it's staring at the g6 square. And if, even if you manage to get f5 in and open up uh, the f file, it's still nothing major and you are going to have to play h4, h5. Which doesn't mean that it cannot be a good attacking setup, but it just takes several moves to make it worthy. Okay, so most often your queen is going to read out somewhere else. Uh, the position could continue with bishop a6, putting pressure on c4, b3 once again. And now d5, the point of b takes c6. And once this happens, cd5, cd5, you once again have this structure which you can try to exploit. Queen to e2, bishop takes d3, queen takes d3, c5. Uh, if c6 is played, then black is accepting the structure that we were already discussing. If c5 is played, then black has the option of pushing c4 through and trying to dissolve his pawn weaknesses, which might be favorable. Most often, it, the position is going to end up with white having the b3 pawn and black having the d5 pawn, so you could argue who is better there. 
Okay, uh, so uh, let's sum up the, the position. So e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, d4, e4, knight d4, knight f6. Now the variation which you have to know. Knight xc6, b6, e5, queen e7, queen e2, knight d5, c4. As black, you can choose between bishop a6 and knight b6. Uh, knight b6 is what the top top players choose more often, uh, but bishop a6 is trickier, so choose whichever one you want. After knight b6, you need to be aware of knight c3, knight d2, and b3. And in the positions with bishop a6, b3, and knight to d2 are the two most common moves. So play might seem similar for, for white in either case, but uh, there are subtle differences which could mean uh, a lot for the position. Now let's look at the game. Uh, Karpov, uh, Kasparov Karpov. This is game 16 from the 1990 match played in Lyon, France, uh, and the second time that Kasparov chose the scotch, so it wasn't really a surprise anymore. And the funny thing is that Karpov did manage to survive uh, game one, they drew, but he didn't survive this one. Uh, after knight b6, Kasparov went for knight to d2, and uh, I chose this game just to show you the nature of the position and what really happens in these games. Queen e6 was chosen by uh, Anatoly Karpov. We have b3, a5 undermining the structure as we just looked at, bishop b2, bishop b4 pinning the knight, a3 chasing the bishop away, bishop takes d2, queen takes d2, d5. And as you can see, uh, Karpov chose a slightly different plan, trying to pin the knight uh, immediately uh, to the king and trying to exchange his dark squared bishop instead of trying to pin to it. And now he's going to have a free hand on the king side trying to castle and he's going to be castling first. Uh, c takes d5, uh, c takes d5, c takes d5, we have the structure once again, uh, rook to c1, stopping c5, castles, and now rook takes c7. And this decision by Anatoly Karpov, I wasn't really sure about when I was analyzing the game. I mean, after rook c1, uh, let's see what the engine says. Uh, yeah, okay, the engine says that white is already significantly better, so the plan with... Uh, the plan with bishop takes d2 was wrong and uh, he was left with these hanging pawns in the center which are a permanent weakness so he decided just to give the to give the pawn up queen g6 was played going for an attack f3 defending laterally bishop f5 g4 bishop b1 and bishop b5 here so yeah i I'm not really sure about this position. I think that uh, Gary Kasparov could have gotten more, and I think that he sort of allowed uh, Anatoly Karpov too much activity. Now, let's look at this position. Okay, wait, g4. Uh, bishop b1, which might seem like a strange move, and now bishop b5. And I think that Anatoly Karpov did get something out of the position. He did manage to complicate matters. Of course, if you're a pawn up, then you want to keep stuff simple, you want to castle, you want to have a safe position. And what Karpov did is, in a practical sense, very useful. He managed to complicate matters. He has his bishop on, on b1, the queen is on g6, and, well, it's not really clear what's going on. The engine slab white, of course, but, uh, yeah. It's not, it's not easy to prove that if you give Anatoly Karpov that much activity. So, in a few more moves, uh, Kasparov did, he did go for castling, he did try to consolidate, he did try to, uh, to exploit the fact that all of his pieces was, were better and that he has the bishop pair, and in a short while, I would say here, his position is already winning and it's really hard for Karpov to do much. But the point is that even Anatoly Karpov, who was now prepared uh, for the scotch, if we look at this position, and he went for knight to f6 once again. He could have chosen something else. Of course, Kasparov thought that, uh, I think that Kasparov thought that he was going to play something else, but he chose the same variation. We have knight c6, b6, e5, queen e7, queen e2. We have the same variation. He chose knight b6, and a few moves later, he was much worse. Queen e6, b3. Now, in this position, uh, a5 is the main move. You can also play bishop e7. Uh, bishop b2 is the main move, and now a4 should be played, as we were looking at. a4 is the move which uh, doesn't allow white to justify his uh, his development of the bishop to b2 and playing b3. If you play uh, if you play the move a4, then you are trying to weaken the structure, you are ex exchanging the rooks off, and you get some compensation. The move bishop b4 uh, has only been played several times, and uh, white scores pretty well. Okay, a3. Bishop takes d2. Queen takes d2, and now d5. Once again, a4 could have been chosen, but I think that Anatoly Karpov went for 
wrong types of exchanges and he didn't use he didn't use the thematic possibilities for black in the position so if you get this any a4 of course can be met by b4 and let's say even c5 if white manages to get in b4 and c5 then black is going to have permanent weaknesses here so this game should be used as an example of how on move 13 if you don't follow the correct plans against uh, the scotch in this variation you could go wrong so i would suggest you start uh, with the uh, with the other games by Gary Kasparov to see how he faces the the Schmidt variation. This I wouldn't say is um, I wouldn't say is uh, his knowledge of the position. It's more that uh, Karpov went wrong, but still Kasparov used it perfectly. So look at his games. Uh, you can also look at games by other uh, by other grandmasters. And uh, Gawain Jones has played it. Uh, Magnus Carlsen played the Scotch. Uh, many players have played this course, so you can find many interesting games. The point is that you should, I think you should study at least uh, 10 games with knight b6 and 10 games b with bishop a6 just to decide which variation you want to go for. Okay, uh, sorry if the video was a bit long. Uh, it was uh, the most important variation of the scotch game and the one which you need to master if you want to play the scotch or if you want to play e5. Uh, let me know what you think. Thanks very much for the support and for the comments and stay tuned for more chess. Thanks very much. Bye bye.